so the Democrats avoided the usual midterm cataclysm. They lost the House, yes, but they gained a seat in the Senate, and they did so despite a bad economic climate and an unpopular president. Meanwhile, Donald Trump has embarrassed himself with stupid remarks, and maybe this time he will stay embarrassed. Liberal rejoicing fills the air. Now for some cold water. Democrats did so well, in part, because a conservative Supreme Court handed them a political gift by overturning Roe v. Wade and Republicans ran a group of dreadful celebrity Senate candidates. The reality of the triumph, however, is that liberals are back to stalemate. Stalemate, that is, with an opponent that has been radicalizing for 50 years. An opponent that continually produces outrageous fire-breathing extremists, then supplants them with a new crop when the zealotry of the first bunch has worn off. It feels like the cycle is endless. But there is an answer to this problem, if we can just think beyond the limits of our current political imagination. Ever since I started paying attention, virtually all the country's political dynamism has been located on the right. They brought us Prop 13, the Reagan Revolution, the Gingrich Revolution, the Tea Party and Trumpism, each successive explosion securing some new tax cut or making some grand deregulatory thrust before exhausting itself and leaving the stage. That there will be another explosion soon, picking up where the last one left off, is almost a certainty. Readers of this paper don't need me to detail where this is going or what it has cost us. The inequality, the deindustrialization, the downfall of our middle-class society, the refusal to play by the rules. Suffice it to say that in the face of all this, chronic stalemate is simply not good enough. There is only one realistic way out of this impasse. The Republican Party must be defeated overwhelmingly, and for years to come. It can be done. Liberalism has done it before, and not all that long ago. Franklin Roosevelt's Democrats won five straight terms in the White House and controlled the House of Representatives, with a few brief interruptions, from 1931 to 1995. But the current iteration of U.S. liberalism is constitutionally incapable of such a feat, let alone building and sustaining the sweeping popular movement we must have if we are ever going to do something about deindustrialization, systemic racism and global warming. To defeat the right, we must first completely rethink the left. Recall, briefly, where the modern Democratic Party comes from. It was born, essentially, in a centrist backlash against the traditional left party that, it was said, foolishly talked the populist language of class conflict. What had to happen, party reformers declared, was a move to the vital center, outreach to Republicans, a voyage to a place beyond politics where everyone agreed about free trade, innovation and balanced budgets. 